At a top speed of over 2,000 km per hour, the F-16 Fighting Falcon goes through a lot of fuel in a matter of minutes. Pretty soon, you'll have a very thirsty bird of prey. Where there's no place and when there's no time for the quick top-up, you'll need the KC-135R air-to-air refueling jet tanker, flown by the RSAF's 112 Squadron. This 42-meter-long fuel tanker with wings carries close to 90,000 kilograms of fuel, enough to fill up 2,400 cars. And above me is the heart and soul of air-to-air -air refueling. This 40-foot extendable refueling boom at the back of the KC-135 is operated by First Warrant Officer Bonus to transfer fuel to another aircraft in mid-air. Looking out from a sliding door, Warren Bonas lies prone on his stomach to manoeuvre the boom into position. During refueling, the F-16s cruise at over 500 km per hour, fast enough for them to stay in the air, but slow enough to link up safely with the tanker. The refueling boom is lowered and Warren Bonas controls its movement with the boom rather vader control handle. He will also operate the light signals to bring the F-16, now known as the receiver, closer into range and to extend the boom accordingly using the telescopic lever. While all these are happening, he is talking and listening to both the receiver and his own aircraft captain, as well as keeping a watchful eye on the safety bubble between the two aircraft. The KC-135R has another way to offload fuel. Trailing behind the tanker are special drogues used for refueling fighter aircraft such as the F-5 Tigers that are fitted with probes. Regardless of the mode of air-to-air -air refueling, it is still a tricky and delicate operation. Two metals don't meet in mid-air. If it ever meets, one is, uh, is a mid-air collision, the other one is for mid-air refueling. All right. So, as it is, the danger is really there. Especially when uh, visibility is low, uh, turbulences, uh, air pockets and all this comes into play. The how, the how stable a receiver comes into the position, how stable the tanker is, it all, you know, it's a mix of chemistry. And to ensure that this chemistry doesn't lead to any explosive situation, preparation is key, according to Commanding Officer of 112 Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Zakir. So we need to ensure that the aircraft is in a stable uh, condition for aerial refueling all the time we will probably circumvent those conditions or uh, less than ideal conditions for flying. And obviously we can consider altitudes that are different from those that are planned. Either we go higher, we can go lower, we can deviate left or right of track. All those have to be done in good time uh, before we conduct air refueling. With such refueling capabilities, the RSF is able to support its fighters in overseas training, deployments and exercises. In the recent exercise Garuda, for example, Two RSAF KC-135R tankers provided air-to-air -air refueling for six F-16 fighters and flew close to 11,500 kilometers to exercise with the French and Indian Air Forces on Orange Air Base in southern France. Compared to refueling your car, air-to-air -air refueling is definitely more than just a simple squeeze of the nozzle. It's a skill that requires surgeon-like precision, nerves of steel, and most important of all, a determination to deliver. Every time you go up there, the most important thing is fuel must be passed on professionally, safely, and most importantly, timely. We've operated with quite a few different forms, uh, different types of platforms around the world. Heavies, light aircraft, fighter aircraft, transport aircraft, strategic bombers, giving us uh, uh, valuable experience as well to develop the proficiency of our aircrew. And our customers, if you want to call it that, have always been happy.